It's the 1987 NCAA Basketball Championship. For McHale Center in Tucson, Arizona, it's the Marist College Red Foxes against the University of Pittsburgh Panthers. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Rolling Sporting Goods Company, maker of the official ball of the NCAA Basketball Championships. And by Pizza Hut, America's favorite pizza place. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Icy Light. Give me the night, give me an Icy Light. By Westinghouse and its 100,000 employees, dedicated to quality and excellence. And by the Cadillac Consultants of Western Pennsylvania. Our setting is the unit campus of the University of Arizona in Tucson. Our battle tonight, two Eastern teams coming west, the Marist College Red Foxes and the Pittsburgh Panthers. Good evening, everybody. Ted Robinson, Dan Belwamini with you in Tucson. Marist College, a lot of people say, who are they, especially out here? Well, they had a great year. They dominated winning both the ECAC Metro regular season and conference championships. And there are many, Dan, who think they can give Pittsburgh a run tonight. Well, I think they can give a run, Ted, but what they have to do is keep the game in the, in the half court. They've got a dominant big man in Rick Smiths, a big guy from Holland, and what Maris has to do is get Smiths the basketball. He's averaging about 20.4 points a game. He's shooting 73% from the foul line, which leads to the belief that this guy can really shoot the basketball. So Smiths has to handle it. They have to keep it in the half court, and they have to rebound with a superior rebounding Pittsburgh team. And, of course, their main guy is Jerome Lane. And Jerome Lane has led the country in rebounding at six feet seven, which is unbelievable. Elgin Baylor's the last guy to do that, and that was some 30 years ago. So Jerome Lane, typical of a Pittsburgh team, great athlete, so it should be an exciting game. And of course, Paul Evans did one thing this year. He got his Pittsburgh players to play every game, take games seriously. That's how they won 24 this year. They'll need that tonight against Maris. All right, Maris and Pittsburgh, and we'll have the starting lineups when we come back to Tucson right after these messages. McHale Center in Tucson on the campus of the University of Arizona. A little disappointed after their Wildcats lost in overtime this afternoon to UTEP. Tonight, going to see a doubleheader. The first game coming up, the Pittsburgh Panthers and the Red Foxes of Marist College. And right now, let us go to the public address announcer for the starting lineups, Roger Saddlemeyer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to McHale Center for the first round of the 1987 NC2A West Region. This evening, it's the Red Foxes from Marist versus the Panthers from Pitt. And now the starting lineups from Maris, starting as a forward, number 35, six foot seven, a sophomore from Budapest, Hungary, Peter Kresovec. And from Pittsburgh, at forward, number 33, six, five and a half, a junior from Detroit, Michigan, Demetrius Gore. Also at forward from Maris, number 43, 6'11", a sophomore from Novi Sad, Yugoslavia, Miroslav Pekarski. And from Pitt, also at forward, number 34, 6'6", a sophomore, Akron, Ohio, Jerome Lane. At center, from Marist, number 45, 7'3", a junior from Eindhoven, Holland, Rick Smith. Also at center, Number 32, 6'10", a junior from Bridgeport, Connecticut, Charles Smith. At guard from Maris, number three, six feet, a junior, New York, New York, Grafton Davis. And from Pitt, at guard, number 11, 6'3", a sophomore, Elizabeth, New Jersey, Mike Goodson. At the other guard from Maris, number 23, six foot two, a senior from Bronx, New York, Ron McCants. Also at guard from Pitt, number 14, six feet, a senior, Buffalo, New York, Curtis Aiken. The coach from Maris, Dave McGarity. And the coach from Pitt, Paul Evans. Four straight 20-win seasons, leading Pittsburgh to a share of the Big East Championship this year in his first year there. We'll be back with the Marist Pittsburgh opening tip-off after these messages. Hi. Now the Marist College Red Foxes from Poughkeepsie, New York. Enrollment at 2,800. The 
Pittsburgh Panthers, of course, Big East, regular season co-champions, lost in the tournament. There are officials tonight, Booker Turner, J.C. Leambach, and Ron Foxcroft. And we're on the campus of the University of Arizona. The matchups tonight, really up front for Marist. They're all foreign starting lineup, if you saw the introductions. Hungary, Yugoslavia, and Holland represented up front, but they're big. Yeah, they're big and they're very good. And I think the key thing is going to be how Smith can stay in this game against Smith, who Smith is an excellent player, and uh, Smith's going to have his hands full. But the big guy, Smith, look for him to get it inside. Look for him to try to attack the boards. It's going to be the quickness of Pittsburgh against the size and strength of Maris. And you're so right, Dan. Of course, Maris doesn't have great depth, and so if Smith were to get into any sort of foul trouble trying to guard Charles Smith, that would make things much more difficult for Maris College. Well, let's see how the officials call the game. If the whistle is not tight, if it's a, if they let them play a little bit, then that could really help Maris. Maris going to start in the zone. Going to start and try to get a matchup. Charles Smith outside. And the rebound pulled down by Ron McCants, the Maris guard. It gives it to draft to Davis, and Davis runs the show. He was in the top 10 in the nation in assists this year. It was draft to Davis, averaging over 80 games. They get it down low to Smith, who fumbles it, goes out of bounds, it'll be Pittsburgh ball. For Maris to win, Ted, they're gonna have to take advantage of every one of those situations. When the ball goes inside, Smith is gonna have to catch it, turn around and take it right to the hoop. He had a good opportunity to score that time, just couldn't handle it. Ironically, the NCAAs are not a new experience for most of the Maris players, they may be for Pitt. Maris was in this tournament last year. Pittsburgh was not. Maris lost to Georgia Tech in their first round game. Rick Smith had 22 points in just 25 minutes in that game, but he didn't foul out. Maris now is looking to play man to man and trying to play good position, trying to force some outside shots. That's a shot they want him to take. And what Maris has to do is block off rebound and keep the game in the half court. Come down, use some of the clock, and try to get Pittsburgh a little frustrated. No need to take quick shots. Well, if you're going to make it, why not, why not go ahead and take it? Davis takes a quick jumper and gets the lead for Maris. Curtis Aiken missing at one end and Grafton Davis hitting at the other. There's Goodson back on the run to Aiken on the wing. Goodson just got into Tucson late last night. Did not come with the team nor practice with them because of some academic difficulties that he had to resolve in Pittsburgh. But he's played 40 minutes, five in the last seven games. So Paul Evans didn't mind him missing practice. A three-second call against Pittsburgh, and Maris has the ball. Yeah, Jerome Lane away from the ball that time. Booker Turner called a three-second violation. Paul Evans not thrilled with this start. His team has not scored. And we're two minutes into the game, and Marist has had a couple of good opportunities when they come down. This little guy runs the show nice. Drafting Davis will get the ball other players. Pittsburgh back in the zone looking to double up. That's an outside shooter, and Krasovec missing. Rebound to Jerome Lane, the nation's leading rebounder this year. And at the other end, oh. shot rolls off the rim. Smith with a rebound of Demetrius scores miss, but he's out of bounds, and the ball will come back to Marist. See, they're out of bounds there. They're going to get a foul on Smith. Smith might have pushed off that time. And they are going to get Smith with a foul. It's a push-off. It is. First foul of the game on Charles Smith. The all-Big East center. Played real well in the World Games this summer. In fact, played for Lute Olsen. Lute Olsen said he was a heart of their club. It was a late entry, but played terrific when they got him. Look at that. They break the press. And if you've never seen Rick Smith before, as many haven't, watch him. He's legitimately a prospect to play ball beyond college. Oh, no question about it. I saw him practice yesterday. He's got good speed, good jumping. He showed you right there. He's about six feet away. He's going to pick up a really a needless foul. That's a foul he does not need to make. All he had to do was play good position. That time he reached in on lane and picked up an ill-advised foul. They need him in the game. Smith's got to avoid all those kinds of fouls. Yeah, reaching in fouls are not what you want from your 7-3 center. So that foul will put Pittsburgh's Jerome Lane at the line. Lane 16 points a game as you see and just under 14 rebounds a game. He's only a sophomore, yet he was a third team All-American pick this year. Well, anytime you can lead the country in rebounding at 6'6 and a half, that's quite a feat and an achievement. The great Elgin Baylor was the last one to do it, Ted, some 30 years ago. It's a way to break the press and get it up. See if they take it in. Davis did, didn't get the basket, but Miroslav Pekarski is there for the follow. -up. And it's interesting to watch Marist use their speed and quickness and the certain players they have to break that press. Thought Marist might take it out, instead they take it right to the basket. Good position by Smith. Lane misses. Lane fouled inside after missing that follow shot. The foul's gonna be off Pekarski. 
Well, Yugoslavia. Ted, 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 you saw the intimidation factor inside, and Pitt's not a team that's easily intimidated, but I'm sure Lane was thinking about the fact that Pekarski's close, Smith's it's close, and when you've got 7 3, 6 11 in the front line and they're active, it's going to maybe make you think twice when you get the ball inside, and that's what's happened. But now in the first three minutes, as Davis tries to steal from Gore, doesn't And Gore's jumper misses everything, but Lane is there again a third time. And in the first three minutes of this game, Jerome Lane has now broken the single season rebound record for a Big East player. He needed two rebounds to come into this game and do it, as you see the Marist coach, Dave McGarity, in his first year. Lane breaking the rebounding record held by Otis Thorpe and Harold Presley. Two pretty fair players. Two great players. And now another seven foot. They got a lot of seven footers this team. Well, what's happened now in the first three minutes of this game, you see Rudy Bugarell coming in from Guadalupe. Pekarski, two fouls, and Smith's once. The thing Marist can't afford to have happen is beginning in the first couple of minutes. Rudy Bugarell, a seven-foot sophomore, so they're seven, three, seven feet, six, seven in the front line. Still looking to go inside. Smith's coming for the help. Might get a three-second call. Charles Smith fighting for that loose ball. Goes out of bounds, and it's out of bounds off the can. So they're going to ball. Bugarell at seven feet playing alongside Smith at seven three. Paul Evans said though the one thing sometimes foreign players don't box out as well as American players in the rebounding category. And that might be a problem for Harris. Three pointer by Gore missing. Rebound through a couple of legs and picked up by McCants. You know, it's interesting too, Ted, that they're using Bugarell in the center and they move Smith to the forward position away on the zone so they can protect Smith a little bit and not pick up fouls. Ron McCants, Grafton Davis, a pair of New Yorkers in the backcourt with the all four in front line for Marist. Here's Davis, got a step on Aiken. Banks it too hard, and the rebound pulled down by Smith. Off to Goodson. Goodson in the front court, pull up from the line. Mark, Mike Goodson. First field goal for Pitt. Marist leading 6 3, four minutes in. Break the pressure again easily. Here's McCants. Basket interference on Bulgarell. And that ball might have had a chance to go down, but Marist, I really think, is doing the right thing. When they're breaking the press, they are going to the basket. McCants gets it up on the rim. Bugarell touches the ball while it's in the cylinder. That ball might have bounced in had he left it alone. But I like the fact that they're taking the ball to the hoop. If you don't take it in and score on it, the other team could press you all evening long. You've got a couple of guards from New York City out there, Danny. You know they're going to want to take it to the hoop when they see open court. What they got to do is get Smiths down there in a the position. That's good inside action by Smith. The foul on Bugarell. But you see Pittsburgh's strategy. Let's go inside first and then pitch it back out but they're making them pay inside by getting the ball around the basket Bugarell playing right behind inside Smith just backing in and taking it strong to the hoop and picking up the foul four fouls already on Marist one on Bugarell Curtis Aiken leaving and Rod Brooken who has started some this year played so very well while Aiken has struggled in recent games but Brooken averaging 10 points a game freshman from Steelton Pennsylvania is on Brooke is a very good baseline shooter as you see the numbers on Charles Smith had an outstanding season at almost 17 a game and 54 percent from the floor and a good free throw shooter I like his work ethic I've watched him a lot I watched him in practice Ted I've seen him this year and he plays very hard you play heavy hard you play hard at every game too so I like this big guy right here and he's going to be I'm sure a future NBA player
He's got some fouls. Pekarski has two. Bugarel has two. Smith has one. So that's a key part of the game. The score is tied. Pittsburgh really has not shot very well. And they've, they've really not had, uh, when they've had transition opportunities, they haven't been able to convert. Now Pekarski, number 43 for Marist, is back in the game with two fouls, replacing Bugarel. Goodson for three. Mike Goodson. Well, Paul Evans said missing practice isn't going to bother him. Showing it early with five points. Pittsburgh leads 9-6. Now Pekarski on the run, and he takes it right at Charles Smith and lays it in. Again, breaking the press and going to the basket. Maris doing a good job of getting it. They need Pekarski in the game. He's too good of an offensive player. Maris back man-to-man. -man. They post up Brookins right away. And that time, that time Smith played good position. The big guy, number 45, Rick Smith, he didn't go for the block. He just went arms extended and did not draw the foul. So good move defensively by Smith. 9-8 Pittsburgh. And it's Maris with the ball. Peter Krasovic. And off to Crampton Dave. They've not really gotten the ball down low to Smith in the first six minutes. Smith's averaged 20 points a game this year. And uh, no question they need a big game from him to beat a team like Pittsburgh. A lot of bumping inside. Smith trying to play in front. They need a little weak side help. That was there. The pass was poor. Hard to throw it over his arms. Mitri a score all the way. Pulled the spring on the shot, left it short, but he was fouled. And let's see where that foul's going. Is that going to Smiths? Maybe. Yes, it is. And so Smiths has picked up his second foul. And Dave McGarrity knows what that means. His three big people now all have two fouls on them in the game's first seven minutes. That was a good transition that time. Good pull up by Gore. There's the foul. Again, Smiths, is, his two fouls have been reach-ins. Really fouls he did not need to commit. Not much of a foul, though, was it, Ted? <laughs> you're saying it's not much of a foul there, huh? But you're right, though. That's 7-3. Smith shouldn't be getting his hand up there anyway, so it's something that even looks like a foul. Well, he's got to make his five fouls good fouls. Well, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, I've coached some seven-footers before, and, and you always feel when you're coaching these guys that they stand out more, and they do. So they've got to play good position, and they have to work on that because if it looks like a foul, many right. times they're going to get a call. Ball almost thrown away, saved by 44, Mark Shamley, who's in for Maris. The starter last year in his pocket, picked by Gore. And Demetrius score. And now here's where an early test comes about for Maris. A little foul trouble, and Pittsburgh's on a run of 12 to 2. And they now lead 13 to 8. And they've gone man-to-man. -man. I thought this man-to-man -man has disrupted Maris, and they're using their quickness and their overplays. Look at the way they're playing inside. Smith playing right in front. They're denying the post position inside and doing a good defensive job against Maris. This is a test for Maris. They're going to have to come down and really try to get the ball inside. They're going to get a foul on Lane away from the ball. Smith's trying to really fight his way through that Lane to get a position at the block, and he draws a foul. On Jerome Lane, that is his first, second team foul of the Panthers. Maris with 16 fouls already. We just got through watching game here in Tucson where a team had to overcome big foul adversity and UTEP did it to win. Maris may not have the depth against a team like Pittsburgh to do that. But Grafton Davis answers with a layup. He has four, and it's 13-10. Moore missing the three out of an air ball. Jerome Lane pulls it down. Yeah, that was an 18, 19 footer that went about 21. Gore, he was extended like it was going in, but it went way over. There's Smith inside. Now Smith's going to do something with it or kick it back out. Good position, I thought, that time inside. They're going to get the foul on Smith. Smith's held that time. And Charles Smith picks up his second foul. It's a real test for the announcers with Smith yes. and Smith's. 
good position inside. Smith does a good thing, though. He's going to try to pick up the third foul on the big guy and takes it right at him. It didn't work that time, but the theory is very good, and Pittsburgh, I'm sure, will go back to that. All right, but now if you're Maris, Dan, do you go at the other end and try to get a third foul on Charles Smith? Well, I think the thing you have to do, Ted, yes. You have to go inside and have your big guy touch the ball. Smith is playing good front position. They haven't been able to. They might have to enter from the point. Get someone at the point and then drop it back down. And on the run, Mark Shamley dribbles the ball off his leg out of bounds. Well, that's just good man-to-man -man pressure, and that outside pressure has hurt Maris. Rudy Bugarell going to come in now for Rick Smith. Six turnovers early for Maris, three for Pitt. Krasovec also comes back in the game and replaces Mark Shamley. Assistant to Dave McGarity is Bogdan Jovicic. I'm glad you said that. Yes. From the University of Belgrade in Yugoslavia, he is the man that recruits Europe, and he does that for Maris. The crooked misses a three, and it's rebounded by Pekarski. And it's a, it's a plan that Maris implemented a couple of years ago. They hired Bogdan Jovicic to recruit both players and students for the college from Europe. That's why you have three foreigners starting on the front line. Turned out to be a pretty good plan, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, this is a good team. Two years in a row in the NCAA. This might be a trend. Other coaches, may, other schools may start doing this. If you can get these kind of players out of Europe. Foul is on Demetrius Gore, and that's his first fourth team foul on Pitt. 13-10, Pitt the lead. Winner of this game plays the winner of the upcoming Oklahoma-Tulsa game on Sunday here in Tucson. The other game will be Iowa against Utah. Pittsburgh back in the zone. They like to zone out of timeouts and then maybe look to trap up. But they still could get the ball inside, maybe go to Smith and try to pick up a third foul. Good position, though, by Smith that time. He didn't go for the block. Well, Pekarski missed the shot, and they're going to get Bourgarell for a third foul, I believe. Well, Bugarel has a lot of ability. He has a lot of potential, but he makes a needless foul, as many European players do. They go very hard at the offensive glass. They're not used to having the game call that closely, and he already has picked up his third foul. And that is seven already on Marist, and so with 10.42 to play in the half, Pittsburgh is shooting one and ones. This will be Jerome Lane going to the line. Shamley now will come back in and replace Bourgarel. Now, yeah, Bourgarel, they want to come out of the game. He said, <laughs> he I'm staying. Yeah. I'm staying. That's when they don't, all of a sudden, they don't know English, right? <laughs> all right, Jerome Lane, the one thing, if there's a weakness in his game, doesn't shoot well from the line. You see the number there. Now, a long rebound off the back iron pulled down by Rod Brooken. Just like a turnover when you miss that one and one. But Pittsburgh was fortunate to get it back. Brooken inside. He may pick up a foul. Shamley lost the ball as he spun out with it underneath. In the wild scramble, Brooken saves it for the Panthers. Brooken now inside Charles Smith and a reach in foul on Krasovic of Maris. Trying to strip that ball away from Smith, and that'll be the first on Peter Krasovic from Budapest, Hungary. And it will put Smith at the line. So Pittsburgh may be able to do something in determining their own destiny in this game from the foul line for the rest of this half. Dave. Yeah, they're in good position. And what they have to do is knock some of these free throws down. It's not going to do them any good to go to the line and miss. So they have to take advantage and get to the line to start making some. This guy's a good free throw shooter, though. Smith's shooting about 74%. And that's very good for a man of his size. All right, two for Charles Smith and a 15 to 10 Pittsburgh lead. We approach the halfway point of the first half in the front court, wrapped in Davis. Look at how far out Goodson's going to come to pick up the defense. And it's Davis all the way to the hoop, banks it in off the baseline. Raptor Davis showing some good quickness and skill here in the first half. Yeah, he sure has. He's got six points. It almost makes a steal. He's very clever. You have to protect the ball against it. Maris down by three, and Smiths hasn't scored, and McCants hasn't scored. So two of their big gunners have not put it in. Makarski high to rebound the missed three by Goodson. On 15-12, Pitt with nine and a half remaining in the first half, and here comes Davis again. Maris really has not gotten the ball inside the low post very well, but they're staying in the game. Charles Smith has two fouls. Then they take it in for a little leaner. Didn't go down. 
That was McCants missing. Here's Lane on the run. Bounce to Gore. Brook in the follow. Rod Brooklyn on the offensive glass, and Pitt leads 17-12. I don't think Maris is going to have the luxury to keep Smith out too long if he just gets up right now. Smith's got to get back in this game. They cannot win the game if he goes for a zero. He's got to score some points and be effective in this game. He can't do it sitting down, even though he does have two fouls, but now's the time to get it back. Nice pass inside, and Shamley meets Charles Smith, tries it a second time from a tough angle, and it's rebounded by Brooklyn. High dribble, but Goodson keeps it under control. Can't make the shot, and Lane gonna be called over the back. Jerome Lane will pick up his second. And the fifth team. Ted, the guy I'm impressed with, too, is Pekarski. Pekarski's very active at 6'11", and a very good player at both ends of the floor. Lane picks up a foul. All right, we have timeout in two side. 8.41 to go in the first half. And our score is Pittsburgh 17, Marist 12. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. Any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Transportation arrangements provided through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for NCAA championships. At McHale Center in Tucson, Ted Robinson, Dan Belwamini with you. 17-12, Pitt leading Marist with 8.40 remaining in the first half. And Pitt gonna make some substitutions as Tico Cooper comes in the game. And also, Pat, Pat Cavanaugh. Great. Walk on guard, Pat Cavanaugh. He's the man guarding Grafton Davis right now. Cooper, 44, is inside, and Rick Smits is back in for Marist. Davis with it outside, looking inside. They just picked up Smits's third, backing into Charles Smith. So the two big men, both with two fouls, and in the battle for position, Smits is the loser. And Dave McGarrett, he doesn't like it. Very physical and active. I already thought this was a frustration foul by Smith. All, look at him reaching around. Doesn't have to do that. All he's got to do is just hold good position and might have got the call his way, but instead he reaches around and he's going to come out of the game as Rudy Bugarell is going to take his place. See, that Dave McGarrity couldn't see that. He couldn't see what our camera picked up because it was the other end of the floor. That well, left arm hooking behind. I'm sure Smith's wanted to have a big game and he's got to be very frustrated. Has not scored a point and has picked up three fouls. And that one there demonstrated his frustration, puts Smith to the foul line. Oh, he does have two points. Maybe I missed a deuce. He does have two. Oh, that's right. He had a dunk, huh? Well, Smiths, though, is now sitting. And for eight minutes and 22 seconds in this first half, Marist is going to have a real challenge trying to stay in this ballgame without their big guy. All right, here we go. We got one. Check. Well, this is Pittsburgh's chance now to put on a little blitz. As you see, Rick Spitz, only two points sitting on the bench and three personal fouls. So you won't see him for the remainder of the eight minutes to go in this half. Two free throws for Charles Smith, and Pittsburgh leads it 19 to 12. Bourgarell, and he has three fouls, and he's back in the game. Number 40 playing in the middle for Marist. Grafton Davis off badly, and Smith rebounds. Outlet Kavanaugh, and Davis picks his pocket at midcourt. Grafton Davis. Davis going about 30 miles an hour. He dribbles in, dribbles out. Makes a good decision, though, to back it out. Didn't have to break that time to set it up. Coming out of a double stack, they're going to look, I'm sure, to go to Pekarski. Pekarski's a guy that's been hot for Maris in the first half. See if he touches the ball inside. Good defense, though, by, by Pittsburgh. They're front and they're denying the post, and it's not easy to get the ball inside. Davis again. Maris guards are doing it all. Their big people are not a factor right now. And Aiken fumbles the pass from Brooklyn, saves it in the corner. Uh, uh, Davis and McCants are doing it all for Maris. The big people are not getting involved in offense. Well, it's because the Pittsburgh big people are taking it away inside. They're not letting them get the ball. And there's a turnover. Now they should take advantage. Three on two going down. And McCants all the way. Kavanaugh trying to draw a charge. But Ron McCants, 14 points a game, and that's his first bucket. 7.05 to go in the half. Maris down seven when Smith leaves the game, and that'll be a benchmark to judge at halftime. They're down seven when he leaves. How will they be at halftime? Maris going back to the end of the game. Smith wants the ball inside. Bugarel with three fouls. Smith short, Tico Cooper. Off to Brooklyn, wide open. Maris not able to challenge a 15-foot jumper, and Pittsburgh's a team that'll knock those down on him. 
Well, what they have to do, Ted, is get it off after that first miss as Pittsburgh up, ups its lead to seven. They're getting two and three shots at it, which is too many. And those turnovers are too many for Marist as well. Mark Shamley going left. And here's Brooklyn ahead to Cavanaugh, one-on-one -on -one against Grafton Davis. That's a goal, Ted. And that's not a great play by McCants because that shot didn't appear to have much of a chance of going in. Yeah, that shot was short. He's going to hit the glass and barely hit the front iron as Cavanaugh comes down and pulls up. And here comes McCants from the backside to knock it away. But Booker Turner saying that ball's on a downward flight. Well, Pittsburgh now with the game's biggest lead at nine points. Six minutes remaining first half. The complexion of this game changed not only with the foul trouble, but Pittsburgh's man-to-man -man pressure defense. They've been able to neutralize the inside game. They just won't let them get the ball in there. Finally, they get it in, and they're going to get Bugarel with a push-off with his left hand. And that will be his fourth personal foul. Well, Borgarell has played about six minutes in this game and has picked up four fouls. And that really doesn't help Dave McGarity's situation very much because he doesn't have a whole lot of size left. Mark Shamley at 6'6 six, six will have to come back in, and Borgarell will sit with four first half fouls. Demetrius score back for the Panthers, replacing Rod Brooken. I really think Charles Smith has done a good defensive job inside. He's the guy that's been eliminating Maris from getting the ball in there and playing good defense and playing around in front. And consequently, the Maris guards have tried to take the game over by going to the hoop and haven't been able to and score effectively. Tico Cooper. He's from the island of Aruba. Six, seven senior, averaged four points a game. Couple of free throws, and now it's an 11-point edge for the Panthers. Well, Dave McGarrity said our biggest fear is not to get in foul trouble and to rebound with him. The one thing they did was get in foul trouble right away, and it's paying dividends now because Pittsburgh has taken advantage of it, and they've taken the game over. Three-pointer, Krasovec missing. Long rebound to Davis. Oh, great shot. Oh, I like that one. Drafting Davis in traffic. Scoops it up, his eight point. And he averaged less than six a game this year. That one's straight out of the Bronx. That's a high percentage slam there by Charles Smith, and he's gonna get a foul call as well on Daryl McClung, who is just in the game. That's how you shoot 60% plus when you're a big man. Smith got a nice pass and turned it into a score and attacked the basket that time. McClung picked up the foul while Smith went ahead and dunked it. Not getting much weak side help. Of course, what kind of weak side help can you get against a guy 6'10", 6'11"? You need a 6'10 or 6'11 man on the other side just to contend with him. And right now, they don't have that kind of size in the game. Charles Smith averaged almost nine rebounds a game. Missing the shot, and it's pulled down by Pekarski. Also was the sixth leading shot blocker in the country was Charles Smith this year. He averaged over three shots blocked per game. We saw a guy here this afternoon, Anthony Cook of Arizona, put on a shot blocking clinic with seven in the game with Utah. Harris looking to spread it out now and run some clock. They do not have their big guys in the game. And I'm sure Dave McGarity said, look, we need to run the clock because we can't play five on five with them for, you know, for the whole 45 seconds. So let's just run the clock and look for a high percentage shot. We don't want an early shot to give Pittsburgh the ball. Down to five on the shot clock. Davis in trouble. Did he walk or is there a foul? Oh, he's got to travel first. Well, that's the one fear of running the clock down. Drafted Davis has to be careful. He has to pick up a technical, which he just, he may have. No, oh, we're going to get a timeout. He came close, though. And that appeared to be a good call. He got bumped, but he walked before it. And so we have an official timeout. Dave McGarity is trying to think of what he can do to get his Maris team back in. Pittsburgh 27, Maris 16. Marist had big size and big people to contend. Front court scoring thus far. Pittsburgh 20, Marist 6. And in the absence of Smith's in there, he only had one basket, which was a dunk. It's very evident he's got three fouls and he's been on the bench. There's another move with a baseline and a dunk. 
That's what Marist really can't defend up front. They have size, but they don't have that great lateral movement. Yeah, and Pittsburgh's doing it on the boards. Demetrius Gore, of course, with a great spin move to the basket. But Pittsburgh not only doing it with their man-to-man -man defense, and I thought the complexion again changed when they went man-to-man -man because they're forcing now pressure, and Marist really can't get the ball inside. The one down thing of doing this is they're running a 45-second clock down to about 10, but many times you end up with a bad shot. You only got five, six seconds to shoot it, and you end up with a four shot. That's what happened the last time, and they went ahead and got a turnover. So they need to get into their offense a little sooner. The clock's down to 15. Now's the time to start, not when there's maybe eight, nine seconds to go. Running the clock down doesn't help you if you don't score. There you're behind, you're gonna have to score points. McClung with a long jumper, that's a two-pointer. By Daryl McClung, 6'3", junior. And it is 29-18, Pittsburgh. 325. Tell you, that's a frustrating shot because he makes it, but yet he's bordering that three-point line. All he's got to do is step back about six inches and they get three instead of two. Using the glass, Chico Cooper off the glass. And his second try goes in. Chico Cooper. Domination of the offensive glass by Pittsburgh. Maris cannot get it off. Pittsburgh with a commanding 31-18 lead. And I'm sure if you're Dave McGarrett, he'd like to just get this inside at 10 and get his starting five on the floor for the second half. He just wants to try to keep it semi-close. Now, Danny, you talked about the different six inches or a foot of that three-point line. How many players, though, I ran into a lot this year who said that was a big difference. That extra six inches to a foot took them out of their range as we have a hell ball between Gore and Krasovec, which will go to Marist. Well, I don't think the players are yet totally comfortable with the three-point shot, and they have to know their positioning on the floor, as you saw the arrow pointing towards Marist, but they have to know where they are so they can they can gather their thoughts and gather their shot and make sure they're right behind the line. Doesn't mean any good just to border it and put your toe on it. Inbounds to Shamley. New 45 for Marist after the held ball arrow now belonging to Pittsburgh. And let's face it, Ted, three-point shot's going to be with us, and they'll be with us next year. They're going to get an off-the-ball call that time, look like on Mike Goodson. And I really hope they don't move the line back. Let's keep the line right where it is, because a lot of players cannot, will not be effective if you move it back. These are college players, not pros. Paul Evans not real happy with Goodson. I mean, he, let him, he let him have it, didn't he? He did. Goodson's first foul, 16 foul. Well, Paul Evans came in from Navy to Pittsburgh this year, and he told the kids first day, it's my way or you're gone. It's that simple. No finger rolls, no behind-the-back passes, no matador defense, and the first thing he told Demetrius Gore is no earrings. Well, he must have been real popular in that first day. <laughs> what do you think? Goodson still doing some talking. He and Grafton Davis were getting tied up, and Goodson was holding Grafton Davis. Goodson's intense. He's playing some strong man-to-man -man pressure defense. He's trying to keep the ball out of McClung's hand. Look at him. He's right. He's all over the place. Clock shot. The shot clock now down to 22. Pittsburgh has outstanding speed and quickness. I mean, they, they can play some defense and they can get up on you. And they're behind and they're still coming out playing this way. You think Maris was ahead the way they were playing, but not, they're not. They're down 13. Shot clock to 10 and behind the back. No one told Rafton Davis the core was coming. Davis fouls Gore on his way in. Davis got caught out there, and he had no idea that Gore was coming on his blind side. No, Drafton Davis was trying to take care of the ball outside. He was trying to start his off as Kavanaugh reached around. Now, he thought there was a foul there. He said, where's the call? No whistle. In the meantime, here comes Demetrius Gore taking it to the basket, and then Davis compounds his error by making a foul. Minute 48 to play in the half. Marist has yet to go to the foul line. Another problem they've had. Pittsburgh is now shooting its 16th free throw of the game. And the free throws made by Demetrius score number 40 in the game for Pittsburgh. Marion Ferguson, junior out of center, Pennsylvania. Ferguson didn't get a lot of playing time this year. Doesn't have a knee. Good. In the back of his jersey. No, he's a good player out of high school. He was highly recruited, good athlete. He's going to get some playing time early with as quick as he may be able to defend this half-court stoppage here by Maris. Maris is doing this because their big guys are in foul trouble, but they need to get into their offense a little quicker. They're waiting. Now it's 15 seconds. Now it's time to play right now. And Gore picks another guy. Picks McCants. And Demetrius Gore is fouled, and he'll go back to the line. 
Foul will be on Ron McCants. And see if they call that an intentional foul in the open court, which would be two shots and the ball out of bounds. It looked like that time that McCants went after him. McCants trying to get it going, but he just makes the turnover. The open court. Now there's the intentional foul, and the referee's going to say two. Yes, it is. And now they should move him off the line if that's the case. There's no sense in being on a foul line. J.C. Leanback made the call, so it'll be two free throws for Gore and a foul, or excuse me, and the ball back for Pittsburgh. Is that is that a breakaway foul or an intentional foul or well, both? Well, that, that, that was a rule they put in last year that if you're in the open court and somebody comes with an intentional foul, and they did that for injury purposes, Ted, because a lot of players going to the basket were held and grabbed. And to avoid injury, they said, if you take an intentional and the man is in the act of shooting, going to the basket on a breakaway, you not only get the, the, the two shots, but you're also going to get the ball out of bounds. Demetrius score with 10 points, and he has made six out of six now from the free throw line. And the ball will belong to Pittsburgh on the baseline with a minute and 11 seconds left in the first half, and the Panthers have opened up a 17-point lead. They've done this all from the free throw line, all with inside play. Three-pointer. And Tico Cooper. I'll tell you one thing, though, watching it really is it's hard to fathom the number of outside shots that Gore's putting up there with the great inside dominance that Pittsburgh has. Yeah, well, one thing it does is when you don't remember who takes that long bomb that doesn't go in when you've got offensive rebounders to just grab it and put it back up. When you start remembering is when the other team keeps getting it off, then you say, gee, who took that long shot? 40 seconds. Pittsburgh has dominated since Smith's left. And a shot by Davis, pulled down by Cooper. Here's Gore on the run. Doesn't have much help. But he doesn't need it. Goes all the way himself, but Gore will pick up the charge. Good position that time by drafting Davis as Gore took it all the way in. Give Davis credit. Not a real big guy in there at about 5'11 and not doesn't weigh very much. There's Gore going in. Drafting Davis establishes good position as an in, he's entitled to that spot on the floor and he picks up the foul. Should be a shooting situation also because the ball had left his hand. So you will shoot it at the other end if the other team's in the one-on-one, -on -one, which they are. So Maris gets a chance to make a free throw, which they haven't done, I don't think, in the first half. This will be their first foul shot. Made by Drafton Davis with 31 seconds to play in the half. And Pittsburgh's made a ton of them in the first half, and that's where the difference is in this game. I thought Smiths might come in. I thought McGarity may say, look, you know, even though he's got three fouls, we don't have the luxury of keeping him out too long. And Kavanaugh's fouled in the backcourt by Davis, and that'll be his second. Well, it was a seven-point game when Rick Smiths left. It was 19 to 12, Pittsburgh. It is now a 19-point game. And that's happened in the last eight minutes. Well, Pekarski hasn't been able to get the ball. You thought Pekarski might try to take the game over and get the ball inside. But the quickness of Pittsburgh has been a difference. You got off of Cooper has come in. How many baskets has he had since he's come in? Three or four, all on the offensive glass. And Pittsburgh has taken control here in the latter moments of this first half. Eight points and six rebounds off the bench by Tico Cooper. For the final 10 seconds, Grafton Davis. To the corner, McCants for three. Hits it. Ron McCants, a three-pointer that ends the first half. But the Marist College Red Foxes, because of foul difficulties to their big people, dug themselves a big hole. Paul Evans, Pittsburgh Panthers leave the floor, leading at halftime 39 to 21. Well, that's the end of our first half at Tucson with the score. Hit 39, Maris 21. We're back after this message and a word from your local station. This is an NCAA Productions Television Championship. From McHale Center in Tucson, Arizona, the Marist College Red Foxes meet the Panthers of the University of Pittsburgh. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Rawlings Sporting Goods Company, maker of the official ball of the NCAA Basketball Championships. And by Pizza Hut, America's favorite pizza place. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Westinghouse and its 100,000 employees, dedicated to quality and excellence. By Iron City, celebrating 125 years of quality, integrity, and tradition. And by Bell of Pennsylvania, whenever you need us, we'll be there.
Pittsburgh leading Marist at halftime, 39 to 21. It was a seven point game about midway through the first half when Marist's 7 3 center Rick Smith's left with three fouls. The rest of the half, the lead for Pittsburgh went from seven to 18. They really capitalized on that, Dan. Yeah, Pittsburgh went to the boards and they dominated them on the rebounding, especially on the offensive end of it. Pittsburgh had many more efforts, and I thought the complexion changed when they went man to man and caused all the trade. The stats will tell you the whole story because Pittsburgh shooting the ball not not great, but look at the free throws. They've taken 19 free throws, Marist won, and the rebounds, they doubled them 22 to 11, and plus Marist has made twice as many turnovers. It's not a turnover stat, but Marist has made 12, Pittsburgh only six. So it's the defensive end that Pittsburgh has keyed this. Marist with balanced scoring, but the one name that's missing in there is Smith. He's only got two points, and they don't get much from Pekarski, where Pittsburgh balanced scoring with Gore Cooper Smith, and I thought Brooken did a good job so Tico Cooper came off the bench to pick up eight points, and uh, Gore with two and Smith with two, but neither one picked up its third foul in the first half. Well, Rick Smith played nine minutes in the first half. He took only one shot. That was a dunk, as you see the front line scoring, what we're talking about, and he had only one rebound. Pekarski, in 16 minutes, the 6-11 forward, took only three shots. So Marist's guards were just too much a part of the offense with an inability to get the ball inside. That's really where Pittsburgh established their dominance. Yeah, and what Pittsburgh did early was press. As you recall, they went to the press, and Maris broke through the press and got some easy scores. Pittsburgh went out of that and met him at half court, and that defense seemed to work a lot better than full court pressure. Right, Charles Smith losing the ball out of bounds in the second half. We'll come, uh, begin with the ball coming back to Maris. Tico Cooper starting the second half for Pittsburgh instead of Curtis Aiken. That moves Demetrius Gore to the off-guard position. Here's Smith, his second shot of the game. He's made them both. That's the kind of turnaround action that Maris needs. Now, Pittsburgh, what they're going to do, I'm sure, is try to play in front. That time, they played straight behind on defense. That's not what they were doing in the first half. In the first half, Charles Smith was trying to get around in front and cause a lot of problems. That time, he played straight behind, and the big guy, Smith, made a pay for it. From the baseline, deep baseline, is Demetrius Gore. Demetrius Gore is not bashful about putting it up. That's his 10th shot of the game. Nobody else in Pittsburgh has more than four shots taken. Lob down low to Rick Smith. Oh, he's impressive when he gets it in there. Every time he seems to handle a ball, he can cause a lot of problems. That time, he goes for the dunk from the backside. Yeah, reach all the way around the rim and dunk it. Lane down low, and Pekarski, once he lost position, just basically exceeded there. And Jerome Lane with the easy hoop, 43-25, Pittsburgh. Well, I'm sure Dave McGarrity told his team not to pick up needless fouls, and Pittsburgh's doing the right thing. They're pounding the ball inside, and you notice Maris that was going for shot blocks in the first half. Now they're just trying to hold position, and Pittsburgh's taking it right to the hoop unmolested for easy scores. Pekarski. And here's the turnaround jump by Miroslav Pekarski at six points. 43-27, Pittsburgh leading Marist. Of course, basket training will do Marist no good. They're going to have to find a way on the defensive end to stop Pittsburgh. Well, they don't have the quickness to cause a lot of turnovers. What they're going to have to do is hope for some misses so they can get it off. But Pittsburgh now running a lot of the clock. They're being patient. They're changing their game a little bit by running some shot clock. Lane with an outside jumper. Really, I'm sure that's not the shot they wanted that, uh, that Paul Evans wanted them to take. But now Maris with an opportunity for a conversion basket. This guy's going to make this one inside. That was a good spot. McCants was going to take that up of himself. And then at the last second, he either heard or caught Smith's trailing out of the corner of his eye. Yeah, Smith didn't want to make a charge. That's why he didn't go for a dunk. He just said, I'll stop and make a short jumper. He's got a good touch for a big guy. 43-29. Three minutes into the second half, and Gore loses the ball out of bounds. Unforced error there on the baseline, and that will give it back to Maris. Paul Evans. He's done a great job at Pittsburgh. Of course, an excellent coach. Did a nice job at Navy. Came over and has changed this program all around. And this team's playing well together. Makarski well, gets his own rebound and misses the slam. And the ball, let's see. Well, J.C. Leenbach is saying he didn't see it. He's going to call it a jump ball. And the arrow will give it to Marist. 
I think Percarsi expected a lot more pressure that time when he went up for the shot. Nobody bothered him. He just knocked it over the basket, but they didn't determine whether it would often anybody. Brooking comes in the game, and Jerome Lane comes out. Sure, Paul Evans did not like that last jumper that he took at about 17 feet. A lot of people don't remember, realize or remember that ball goes out of bounds on the inbounds off Grafton Davis. And to Paul Evans had success at Navy before David Robinson. And he had an 18-win season before David Robinson was ever at Annapolis. And man proved he could do it even without the big, that big dominant player. Yeah, and he is a dominant player, no question about it. Got 50 in the loss, but uh, he put on a tremendous performance. Three by Brook and misses, and there's Smith going right around Smiths for the layup. And again, the Smiths, even if he wanted to try and defend that, unable to because of the three fouls. Now, what I, I'm sure Smith wants to do is get inside that 10-minute mark and have the game relatively close. Then he can start playing some aggressive defense. Nice move there. He didn't make the shot. It's pulled down by Demetrius Gore. On the run to Charles Smith. Nice move by a man they say will be a power forward in the pros. Yeah, he played power forward in the World Games when Robinson played the post and did a great job for Lute Olsen. Karski and there's going to be a technical for hanging on the rim. And he didn't have to do that because there was no one there but Pekarski. Yeah, that was an emphatic hang on the rim, too. Pekarski didn't have to do it at all. He had to do was go up for the easy dunk. There's the dish inside. Pekarski had this one without much problem, but he hung on the rim for quite a while. No, no question, good call. Right, he, he, he forced the officials to make that call. Yeah, they don't want to make that call, but when you, when you just kind of hang suspended there, they're going to go ahead and do it. Goodson will shoot the technical. Well, Pittsburgh with the ball. It's 47-31. They've played almost four minutes of the second half. Winner of this game on Sunday will play the winner of the Oklahoma-Tulsa game, which follows this one here in Tucson. Iowa and UTEP, the other teams to win today here in Tucson in advance to a matchup on Sunday. Three second call inside. Charles Smith whistled for three seconds as Goodson was lining up the ball outside, so that turnover gives Marish the ball back. Yeah, and Smith was really calling for the ball, and Paul Evans, I'm sure, saying, look, Smith had good position in there, and they had a chance to initiate a pass, and they delayed, and Smith was caught in there. When the big guy's open, you got to give it to him in there. Drafton Davis just jitterbugging and skittering all the way down the floor and across the lane, and a foul inside. Call on Goodson, Mike Goodson's second. That's the first foul of this half that's been whistled. And Rafton Davis will go to the line. Only a 56% foul shooter. MVP of the ECAC Metro Tournament. Marist had kind of two different seasons. They were three and six in their first nine games in which Rick Smith did not play. He was suspended by the NCAA for the first nine games of the year. Marist went three and six. With Smith, they went 17 and three. Now he might make you a better coach when he's in the game. No question about it, because this guy's powerful inside. Shows you in the second half, when he's had a chance to get the ball, he's been able to score against Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh's one of the dominant teams in the country. Demetria score, 47-33, Pittsburgh. And now Goodson out near midcourt. Yeah, Goodson really controls his team. He's done an excellent job of setting the defense. Now Maris going into a trap, so Pittsburgh's got to spread it a little bit and look to get the ball in the middle of the floor. Goodson does a, does a good job of recognizing what defense they're in, bringing the ball back out and get everybody in the right place. Here's the trap again. Demetria score. Junior out of Detroit, Michigan. 14 for Gore. He is the leading scorer for Pittsburgh. And they lead 49-33. Smith's down low. I think has Smith missed a shot. He missed one the second half. He's four for five. There's Gore back inside, going to the left hand. Gore now with 16. Smith has 10 for Marist. And it's 51-35 pit three-pointer. Like Krasovic is good. He is their best outside shooter, 46% three-pointer, and that's the first one he's made tonight. 
51-38. Pittsburgh knows, though, that Marist isn't going for any shot blocks, and Gore's taking it to the basket. Look at inside. He's taking this one right to the hoop, and that's about the fourth time he's done that. And they're just, as you said, Dan, they're pounding, they're hammering away and bludgeoning Marist inside. Every possession. Give Marist a little credit, though, because the second half, they've stayed with them. They've been able to score. They're showing you the kind of ability they have when they can keep their big guys in the game. They can cause you some problems. And here's what we're seeing from Marist is what we didn't see in the first half. The big guys are getting the ball on offense. The yeah, first that, half was all the guards. Yeah, and that's not the way. The, the guards are not going to do it for Marist. The guards have to supplement the scoring. The big guys inside are the ones that are going to have to do it as Brooklyn takes this to the back. Pittsburgh has shot every ball the last four times from about two feet. And again, where Marist is in the part of the game they can't get in basket trading. Pekarski missing, rebound Cooper. 55 to 40, Pittsburgh, and here they are on the run. Goodson bouncing, Brooklyn fumbles in the lane, and here comes Marist with a three on one. Davis, Smith. Hello. Let's I'm bring that you, one. Smith's about a foot and a half over the rim there. Yeah, let's bring that one in from about 12 feet. Smith's dunked that one for the foul line. I like it. He's, he's, I, he's a definite pro. There's no doubt about it. This guy's going to be in the NBA. He's got too much skill. Dimitri has score. Oh, nice little left-hand shovel. And Dimitri has scores having himself a ball game. 20 points now. Well, the one thing you have to do if you're mayor is to play a little bit better position because Gore has run that baseline about three consecutive times. You need to take the baseline away and force him to the middle of the floor. Good pass inside from the point. Might have gone off the Pittsburgh player. did. Demetrius Gore had double figures only twice in his last 11 ball games. He's put together 20 tonight. Dave McGarity running on his Maris team, trying to keep him in the game. Timeout, Pittsburgh 57, Maris 42. You can't help but notice Rick Smith because he's 7-3, but this really makes you take notice. Yeah, this is the turnover here. Drafting Davis gets the ball in the open court. And Davis looking Smith's all the way. You have to give him credit because he knows the guy he wants to get the ball to. Smith's one step from the foul line, and he just put this home with authority. But the way you watch Rick Smith, and we watched him in a practice last night, you watched him run up and down the floor two times, and immediately you said, this guy's got some athletic skills, athletic abilities. Off the inbounds, Krasovac gets a three. That's well, 57 to 45 now. Pittsburgh unable to totally relax here with 12 and a half minutes to play. Yeah, this game's not totally over. Pittsburgh cannot relax because Maris is having an outstanding second half. They're shooting the ball especially well, and they've climbed back to 12. So Pittsburgh's going to have to regroup a little bit and think about what brought them to this spot, and that's been inside action. And that, this is what's got them there, this inside power stunt. And they uh, go back to Smith again, and he puts it home. 13 now for Charles Smith. He and Demetrius Gore are the two men in double figures. Gore with uh, 20 and Smith with 13. Smith. Smith, another foul. That will be the third on Charles Smith. The one habit Smith has, Ted, is he watch his left hand. He puts his left hand, well, he did it before the move that time, but he picked up an offensive foul early by putting his left hand around his defensive player. He did it again that time, did not get the call, but went ahead and made the, tried the turnaround and got fouled. You look at Smith's too, Dan, you see a little bit of upper body muscular development and you see a pretty solid lower body, which is the one thing. He's not a, he's not a what we call a beam pole spring beam type. He's got a pretty solid lower body. Yeah, he's got a good athletic body and runs especially well and a good shooter. And I really think he's going to be an excellent pro. Wait till he runs that floor and gets more shot opportunities. And he has to learn to stay out of foul trouble. He's going to get a violation on the lane that time. And it's going to be a violation on Maris for being over the line. He might have he might have had his foot over the line that time when he shot it. They missed the foul shot anyway. That gives the ball back to Pittsburgh. 59-45. The Panthers leading. 11.50 to play. Dimitri has scored. Nice bounce down low to Smith. And it's going to come back into Pittsburgh. Out off Pekarski. Dave McGarity didn't like that call, but that was a good one. It didn't it did go off the car seat. <laughs> Pittsburgh has played the inside power game especially well. And this man here, Gore, has made a lot of shots on the baseline. Grafton Davis for Maris. Krasovec open three. Well, Pittsburgh's got to get a guy out there in the wing. They knew Krasovec could hit threes. They worked against that last night, but they've been kind of ignoring him in the game. Well, they ignored it because they had a big lead. Then all of a sudden, the second half, they got it going. 
You're going to have to think about that again. Good position, I thought, that time inside. Smith went up at the bottom of the backboard. The ball comes out of bounds, and now Maris is going to race up the floor and try and catch Pitt napping. Now the Panthers hustle back on defense. And suddenly now Marist can get this game into single figures if they can score here. And it'll be Smith. And a lead that was 20 is now down to nine. Pittsburgh may need a timeout to regroup. Now I think Pittsburgh has to start playing some defense because the half is down to 10, 11 minutes, and Smith doesn't have to play that conservative. He's got three fouls, but he doesn't leave now. Doesn't need Smith just to take it into the basket unmolested. He has to go ahead and exert himself a little bit. Well, he does it that time. That time he does, and he picks up the foul. Reached around and made a really an ill-advised foul. Didn't have Boy, to do he, that. Could have just played good position. It was kind of an afterthought. That's what I was going to say. Now watch, Smith is going to lose position, and then after he's already lost position in the hoop, he reaches the foul. You see. Yeah, the shot was up, and he reached in with the left hand, made a ticky-tack foul. Don't need to do that. That's the third one he's had like that. Once Smith made the move, he was by him. Just give him the basket. Well, Smith is going to have to sit after picking up his fourth foul. That's the first foul of this half against Maris that we played almost 10 minutes. And that's a complete reversal from the first half, where Maris had a lot of fouls. Pittsburgh shot 19 free throws. Maris only shot one. Well, Smith trying to complete a three-point play. The shoulder's on him, Dan. Well, both centers have played extremely well. Charles Smith has... He's got maybe 9, 10, 11 points in the second half. 16 for Smith now, and it's 62 to 50, Pittsburgh. Borgerell with four fouls all in the first half is the man that has replaced Smith for Maris. Rudy Borgerell has the ball there, fumbles, picks it up. Tough shot doesn't go, Jerome Lane down court to the breaking, Brookin. Rod Brookin. And a foul from behind on Krasovic. I'll tell you, it must be said, Marish has committed a number of fouls that have had no purpose to them. Yeah, and after the fact foul, here's the transition, the pass. Great pass. So Brooklyn, yes, he did. Look down the floor, and Brooklyn takes this in. No, no sense following him here. He pushes him. So they may get an intentional and a two-shotter. And that's what's going to happen. Krasovic. No, no, they're going to get one shot. I thought they might call intentional, Ted, but only one. Krasovic second. Borgarell the rebound. And now foul on Lane. Lane was trying to sneak in behind Borgarell and strip him of the ball, and Jerome Lane gets called. His third in the third team. Maris got it down to nine briefly, but now it's back to 14. Well, they can't afford to have Smiths out of the game. It was a seven-point game in the first half when he went out, and, of course, that was extended to about 18, and now when he goes out, it's a nine-point game, and our, real fast, it got up to 14. So, Dave McGarity may say to himself, I can't keep this big guy out too long. Got to go with your best players. This is another three-pointer. Charles Smith clears it. Here's Pat Cavanaugh. Down low to Jerome Lane. Off to Charles Smith. Well, very quickly, Pittsburgh sending Maris the message. You're not getting back in this game for long. 9.40 to play. 18 for Charles Smith. Yeah, he's had a superb game. That was, that was just like it was planned. Davis wanted to foul. Oh. He's going back going, I got fouled. And he knocks it off the glass. Grafton Davis with 12. 66-52, Curtis Aiken back in. Curtis Aiken has not played an awful lot. In the second half, only 11 minutes in the first half. Now, Brooklyn, Kavanaugh, and Aiken. Missing in the rebound of McCants. Pittsburgh really will to go far in this tournament. It's going to need Aiken to shoot the ball again. Aiken makes the steal here. It's three on one. That's just time. Oh. I think he was pretty much thinking dunk from about 15, 18 feet. That's what you call an emphatic over the hand. Just kind of windmill that one through. 68-52. What would you have done if you were crashing back back on defense there? Yeah, I was wondering Get if he was going to take a charge. Get he out. said, no, he thought about it and said, uh-uh, forget it. Get out of the way. Nice pass from Davis to McCarthy. Well, he, he hung on it again. Well, he did. 
And he gets away with it this time, 68-54, Pittsburgh. Good ball movement by Pittsburgh. Yeah, they did. Three men on that one side. Yeah, inside to out that time. Smith knocked it to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh threw it to the wing and right back. Aiken makes the pass inside and Smith puts it away. It's a way to attack. In to out, back to in again. 7.50 to go. It's a 16-point game. McCants, tough shot. Rebound Kavanaugh. Boy, he fires him right on the money to Brooklyn. Think he's a quarterback? Oh. He is. He was a walk-on on the Pittsburgh football team, and he put an 80-foot bullet right on the money to Rod Brooklyn. He may go up with the baseball team after that. He might have a great fastball. Well, we have timeout in Tucson with 7.38 to play. It's Pittsburgh 72 and Marist 54. Vic saw this move in Budapest, Hungary. Yeah, I don't think he ever saw this windmill from Jerome Lane, the ninth dunk of the game for Pittsburgh. And Marist has had six dunks of their own. Here's the baseball strike from Kavanaugh all the way down the other end, and Brooken scoops it in. So Pittsburgh doing it with their defense. They're doing it in the open court. Marist made a run, but as soon as Smith went out, all of a sudden Pittsburgh came to life and just ran off six, eight points in a row. Now, now Smith is back. Now Dave McGarrity knowing he game's getting away from him now at 725. He can't wait any longer. Nice move on the baseline by Pekarski. 14 for Miroslav Pekarski. Brooken down low. And there's Rod Brooken at 6'5", posting up against the 7'3", Rick Smith. Yeah, Brooken, a great athlete. He picks up his eighth point of the second half and has 12 for the game. And give Pittsburgh a lot of credit because they're exploiting the weakness of Maris, which their big guys have been in foul trouble, and they've counted the ball inside. They haven't lived with the outside jumper. They're going to get a foul before the shot that time. That foul going to be on Chico Cooper is first we're hearing that some of the pittsburgh players may have been tired a lot of minutes towards the end of the season really showed in the big east tournament i would think if that were the case paul evans would have liked to have blown this thing open early to be able to get his starters some rest hasn't happened and smith with a great block on curtis aiken ball saved in kicked fumbled and finally lane comes out well i'm sure it's very strenuous playing that tournament after you play the whole regular season but this is the second season and Pittsburgh has to be ready because obviously in an elimination type situation as you have in the NCAA, every game is critically important and you have to be at the top of your game all the time. There's a three-point shot. Daryl McClung hitting the three-pointer for Maris, 74-59, down to Aiken and Smits is back and Aiken says no way and pulls it back out. But when you have Smits in a game that complements your outside shooting because all of a sudden, you have to guard the big guy inside, and you're going to get some outside shots. When he's not in there, you can concentrate on pressure and more on the perimeter. Reach-in foul there on Drafton Davis will be his third, and Marist's third team foul. 6-10 to play tonight in other games. Georgetown and Western Kentucky have been winners. Georgetown beating Bucknell. Western Kentucky over West Virginia. 48 hours from now. The 64 team field will be down to 16. Heading to regional sites next weekend at the Meadowlands, Louisville, Cincinnati, and Seattle. There's Pat Kavanaugh hitting the jump. It's 76-59, Pittsburgh. Good shot by Kavanaugh that time because Maris was sagging down so much on defense. They're giving the open 16-footer, and Kavanaugh put it home. Karski. Karski and Smith both having good offensive second halves, but neither one has been able to really be much of a factor at the other end of the floor. Great pass from Lane to Rod Brooken. That time, the half-court trap by Marist, and Pittsburgh got it right in the center of the court. Lane showing you he can also pass the ball besides rebound and score. Nice pass inside Pekarski, but he can't hang on. Saved inbounds, and here come the Panthers on the run with five minutes to play. Jerome Lane. I'll tell you, Dan, I'd like to see Pittsburgh's possession chart in this half. They have to be scoring three quarters of their trips down the floor. Yeah, you have a lot of dots right near the basket because Pittsburgh, that's a 10th dunk of the game. Gotta keep track of the dunks with these guys because they may set all kinds of records. 
Troy Hanson, our statistician here at courtside, doing that for us tonight. Here's Brampton Davis and Pekarski. Oh. Harris has seven of their own. Pekarski now has 18 points, and he's had 14 of those in the second half. But Marist has been unable to do anything defensively to stop Pittsburgh. And the second half has really been basket trading. Marist got it to nine for a brief minute. Here's Davis stealing from Kavanaugh. And Rafton Davis with a 14-point game. Kavanaugh let him go, which was smart. Kavanaugh had no way of stopping that one. No sense picking up a foul. Not an awful lot, though, that Marist can do right now. They're down to four minutes, they're down 15, and they just haven't been able to stop Pittsburgh. A couple of sloppy turnovers here, though, by the Panthers. Yeah, the Panthers have to get Smith back in the game. They tried to give him a little bit of a break, but they need him back in there just to create some, some chance to scoring inside. Nice lob to Smith, lost it. Here comes Aiken on the run. And Aiken gonna go in all the way, and he is fouled by Davis, and the basket counts. Fourth foul on Drafton Davis and Curtis Aiken. Getting the lap, and he'll go to the line for a three-point play as Smith and Gore come back in for Pittsburgh. With 340 remaining. That's about the fourth or fifth time that you can recall in the game where really Pittsburgh's had unmolested layups, and yet Maris has come over to try to make ill-advised shot block attempts and pick up fouls when there's no need to pick them up. It doesn't matter at this point of the game with three and a half to go, but it was critical earlier. All right, here's Aiken. And we have a timeout on the floor after Aiken's, excuse me, we do not, after Aiken's. Yes, we do, after, after all. After Aiken's three-point play, we have timeout with 3.40 to play in our score. It's Pittsburgh, 83, and Marist, 65. <laughs> Pittsburgh has been in control since midway through the first half when the... Big man for Marist, Rick Smith, got into foul trouble, and the Panthers have basically had their way on offense in this entire second half. Well, they've done a good thing, though, Ted. They've taken advantage of the weakness of, of uh, Marist with foul problems, and Paul Evans' club has punched the ball inside, and I really think Charles Smith has had an outstanding second half, along with Demetrius Gore, and they've been able to score around the basket. Even Brooklyn, when he was in there, started taking it to the hoop. One thing Pittsburgh can do, they've got great athletes, and when they get the ball inside, they're very difficult to handle. Also, when they get the ball in the open court, they cause a lot of problems with their defense, and their transition baskets are good. This is a team that could go a long way in the NCAA, in the NCAA tournament. Foul was on Jerome Lane, his fourth. Five fouls against Pittsburgh here in the second half, and Marist will inbound to the baseline. 3.29 to play. Pittsburgh still with four starters on the floor, and now a turnover. Goodson, lead pass to Kavanaugh. Good lob. And a long, great lob. Great lob by Kavanaugh. Say, Dan, that Pat Kavanaugh impressed me, even though Lane gets the hoop. Kavanaugh's thrown several nice passes in this game. Yeah, especially for a walk-on. It's hard to believe that this guy wasn't recruited at all, and he comes on, and he's just a good quality player. And a good role player. I'm sure he knows his spot on the club. Very happy to be here. And he was looking pass all the way down the floor, and he got that one up perfectly around the rim. That's a tough pass to throw. A lot of people think that's easy. It isn't. It takes a special kind of a player to make sure he makes that right with perfection at the right spot. Here's another dunk. Oh, Borgerell contesting. And the dunk does not go. And here comes Maris. So we are under three minutes. 85-65. Pittsburgh. Panthers. Smith hits the outside shot, so he shoots from 15, and Rick Smith has 16 points tonight. Got 14 in the second half. Had this kind of a start, it might be a different story because that's what they were lacking in the first half. They've done a decent job of trading baskets with Pittsburgh in the second half, but too much of an advantage at halftime. Demetrius Gore, the one-hander off the glass. 22 for Demetrius Gore tonight. We're talking about conference pride in our earlier game. There's a long lead for Goodson. Off the steal, and Mike Goodson lays it in. Yeah, the fans are unhappy to dunk it. They wanted <laughs> another dunk. Give him a boo as he took that one in for a layup. 2.05 left. Pittsburgh will now be the third Big East team to advance, joining Georgetown and Providence. And as we talk, St. John's and Syracuse are playing, and we have not yet received word as to whether yet they've advanced, but no Big East team is out yet. By contrast, the ACC, Borgarell stuffed by Charles. He wanted a whistle, they get it. Wanted a whistle, they get it. Everybody stopped. That was great, like they were in a time warp. Everybody just, just waited for a whistle and nothing happened. 
Well, Borgerell got stuffed twice by Smith, and as you said, everyone stopped. It was like suspended animation. Yeah, Borgerell thought he got fouled here. Then he said, okay, I think I'll bring this one close. Now he goes up again and says, okay, where's the foul? No whistle. <laughs> then he goes up again, and there's no whistle. And then he finally says, what's going on? <laughs> that, that was great. For Hurdy Borgerell. Charles Smith's fourth foul, and Borgerell will shoot. Finish that thought, the ACC which sent six teams to the NCAA. Four were knocked out in the first round. Only North Carolina and Duke survived the first round. So conference bragging rights, which are often a subject of discussion during NCAA time, right now the Big East is sitting pretty. Yes, they are, as you see Rudy Bucarell's numbers, but um, the Big East, and I really think Georgetown played especially well at the end of the year. Pittsburgh will play the winner of the Tulsa-Oklahoma game, which should be a tremendous game on Sunday. So there's some good basketball coming, but the Big East was an especially tough conference, and I'm sure at least one of those teams, or two of them maybe, will get to the final eight and possibly win the national championship. Remember, Ted, the national champion has come out of the West the last three years. Georgetown won it, Louisville won it, and North Carolina State all came out of the West. So the West has been loaded, and it's a tremendous West regional again. You could get some, some superior teams going up in Seattle. Tim Murphy, a senior from Cromwell, Connecticut, in the game for Marist, committing that foul. Both teams have brought in some, some of their uh, reserves to give them some playing time with a minute 25 left. There's Murphy ripping the ball away from Gore. Ball comes free. And Pittsburgh's Goodson comes away with it. And Charles Smith, great baseline move. What quickness. He flew by Smith there, and he's fouled by Murphy. One thing the Pittsburgh players do use the baseline effectively, and they like to run the baseline. Every time they get the ball, they go ahead and run under the basket and try to utilize the basket as a shield. Now, normally, you want to take the baseline away. You want to move your feet and position yourself. Even if you're out of bounds on defense, it doesn't make any difference. Don't let the guy go baseline. Force him into the middle of the floor where you've got a little help. But that has not been the case in this game. Pittsburgh has won the baseline war. With a minute 16 to play, some other players in there for Pittsburgh. Is John Rasp, a 6'6 freshman from Irwin, Pennsylvania. The Marist Red Foxes coming all the way from Poughkeepsie, New York. Dave McGarrity said this was great because his team did not get a chance to travel at all during the season. They made no trips outside of New York and the Meadowlands. So for them, this was an extra treat because of getting a chance to come to Arizona. Again, the weather's been great here, and they enjoyed their trip. He said, we could have stopped off and played this game anywhere in the Midwest. Could have stopped off late in Chicago. We said, we're happy we're here because it's been it's been a fun trip. The result may not be a lot of fun, but this team played well in the second half. They just couldn't overcome the foul problem and couldn't overcome the quickness of Pittsburgh. Charles Smith, by the way, leaving with 22 tonight. Marion Ferguson back in the game for the Panthers as we go under a minute, 91-68. Pittsburgh leading Marist. And Rasp missing. This Pittsburgh team also has to feel like they're erasing the memory of last year's sour ending to their season when they lost a game they could easily have won in the Big East tournament in the final seconds and then were beaten by Southwest Missouri State in the first round of the NIT. But today seeing Southwest Missouri beat Clemson in the yeah. NCAA. It, it, makes, it doesn't make you feel so bad, does it? And then they win their first game here. 40 seconds. Chris Green is in the game for Maris, number 14, a freshman from Boston. Yeah, the one guy they don't take out is Woodson. His pardon me, is Goodson, rather. Goodson's a guy that stays in the game, number 11, and he's played the entire way for Pittsburgh. So Mike Goodson, a key player. He's a guy that controls the ball, and he gets the ball to all the other players, and he's had an outstanding game. So Goodson not getting much of a rest, and he has not had a chance to practice, as you see Drafton Davis go out of the game. They'll be back for Marist next year. They lose Ron McCants and Mark Shamley from their roster of players who play considerable minutes for them. They lose two players. Goodson shooting the free throws. And there's the Panther team that will be here on Sunday to play the winner of the Oklahoma-Tulsa game. There may be a new dunk re record established in Ooh, that one also. Yeah. We had 19 dunks in this game. 29 seconds to play. Goodson now is out, replaced by Steve Maslick, a freshman from Freedom, Pennsylvania. There he is. 93 to 68, Pittsburgh leading Marist. Pretty convincing win for the Panthers. Scott Colombo, number five, also in the game for Pittsburgh. There he is on the loose ball, feeding it ahead to John Luther, 24. Get a, get a shot up. Got to get these guys to get some shots up. You got to say you scored an NCAA tournament game. 
It's kind of a nice treat for them because they don't, these players don't get much of a chance to play in the Big East games. They're so competitive and so tightly fought that uh, the bench players, the reserves, don't get to play many, many Big East games. Well, I know the coaches like to get them in the game and they've got a chance to do that. And you want to tell your guys when they get in. A lot of times they get in, they play very conservative. They don't want to shoot the ball. They want to set up and run the offense. When the game is decided, you tell them, hey, look, go ahead and take the shot. See if you can score one. Ten seconds to play here as Marion Ferguson is at the line. These are memories that will stay with you for a long time. NCAA Tournament Championship competition. You can always tell your grandson you scored a basket or you did something spectacular. You don't get very many chances at this. There's only 64. And if you don't play well, you're out in a hurry. So Pittsburgh moves on to play the winner of the Tulsa-Oklahoma game. And Dave McGarity has to be disappointed. But his team, I thought, played well in the second half. The first half was all Pittsburgh. In the game for Marist, Matt Schoenfeld from Roselle, New Jersey, and John McDonough from Lindprop, New Jersey, in the game. Schoenfeld putting a shot up on the buzzer that does not count, and the game is over. And the Pittsburgh Panthers advance to the second round here in the West Regional. Paul Evans' team doing it rather convincingly. Their strength, the inside game, was the difference here as Pittsburgh beats Marist. Charles Smith, power game inside, 22. And Demetrius Gore, who had struggled towards the end of the regular season at 22, as Pittsburgh beats Marist here at the West Regional in Tucson, 93-68. to 68.